What's the best way to see comedy in a dead club? What's the best way for you to watch a comedian perform when he's struggling? And I think that translates into our life just perfectly. This episode is 1929 with Louis C.K. of the Joe Rogan Experience. I'm Coach Colin, coolest high-performance coach in the world. And if you want the absolute best insights to the podcast and videos you love, hit that subscribe button. Let's get into it. When I was an open micer, mm-hmm. I went, went to see him. I sat in the front row. It was amazing. Because it was like a half-filled crowd. It was like, right. uh, yeah, like a Wednesday night show. Yeah. Catch Rising Star in Cambridge. Still yeah. the best way to see stand-up comedy. Yeah. Is in a dead club. Right. That you get brings to see the, the real deal. Every, I've been, when I was getting ready for this tour, I'm on now, I was at the cellar a bunch. And like I usually, that's where I usually build this stuff. And um, I was struggling a lot of sets. Because the cellar has become very um trendy uh, there's a lot of cooler people that go there like nicely dressed young people go scene. to the cellar it's a scene now so it's not automatic that they're gonna get it's not it's like a weird thing and it's actually good i think in a sense because you gotta fight for your laughs a little more than we used to but uh but i've been i've done some shows this year where like i'm struggling I'm like, every bit is pissing them off. And not for like PC reasons, but just because they're not trained comedy audiences. And they're like, ew, it's more that old thing. <laughs> Remember before, yeah. like, um, that's problematic. There was just, ew. Right. So it's like that again. And I'm just struggling. But I got not, nowhere to go. All my shit is, in this set is kind of nasty. So I'm just getting through it. But I there's a out of the 100 people at this other, there's about 20 of them who are fucking having the best time of their lives. Like they're laughing so hard because not only are they seeing jokes that they like, they like my jokes, they're getting to watch people get really offended (laughs) and they're getting to watch me squirm. Like every time I do a joke and it would kind of get this, ugh, then I'd go like, you'd see me go fuck and I'd hear people go like, this is the, like high-fiving, like this is the best night. So much better. Than seeing your favorite comic in a, in a theater where everybody loves him. I don't know if it's so much better, but it's definitely different. It's just there's more friction yeah. to it, so there's yeah. more there's more going on. One of the uh, when I was like early days, like open micer, me and Fitzsimmons saw Bill Hicks bomb at Nick's oh, yeah. Comedy Stop. Most of the times, that's what he did, and yeah. and clear the fucking room. Yeah. But at the end of his set, there was 50 people left. Like, what does Nick's hold? Like 300 plus people? Yeah, it was big. It was about 300. Yeah. Something like that. So uh, at the end of the set, there's 50 people left in the audience and maybe 20 comedians. Mm-hmm. And Fitzsimmons and I are just fucking howling. <laughs> We're howling. We, we, we thought it was so funny. And it was so funny that he was clearing the room. And he went on after Larry Norton. Do you remember Larry Norton? Sure. Comic, comic on a Harley. On a Harley, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm Larry Norton. I'm a comic on a Harley. Yeah, that's it. So Larry Norton killed, and then Hicks went on after yeah. him. And, you know, Forget Hicks is, it. you know, it's fucking existential angst yeah. and smoking cigarettes and, you know, mm-hmm. cancer and this and that. Yeah. And then uh, the audience is just fucking leaving. And so yes. he's doing, I don't know if you remember that bit that he does about, uh, I think it's like the devil fucks John Davidson in the ass. Yes, and De- and uh, Debbie Gibson, or no, that was Jimi Hendrix That's fucking Debbie one. Gibson with his guitar. <laughs> that was that. that was I, you one. wanted rock and roll, didn't you, Debbie? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. No, you know. Yeah, that was a different one. Yeah. But so he's doing this bit where John Davidson is shitting out the devil's kid. That's and, what. It, and he's, yeah, I remember so he's that. Squatting and he's like. And he looks up and he goes, yeah, this generally clears a room. Yeah. And the people are just getting up in yep. fucking droves. And we were howling. We thought it was so funny. Yep. We thought it was so funny. It was just, yep. it was nice to see this guy who is so, like, respected. Right. But eating shit in front of a bunch he of people that didn't know who lot. he was. He yeah. ate shit a lot. Yeah. I worked with him. I opened for him at the San Francisco Punchline. And uh, he, there were some nights where he was destroying just killing. Uh, he did this whole thing about that they should use terminally ill patients as stuntmen. Yes, for Chuck Norris movies. Yeah, he goes, <laughs> do you want your grandmother to die alone in a room of strangers with her with her veins fading into dust? 
or do you want her to meet Chuck Norris? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he'd do this thing of sending out like this person who's like half dead, and then he just Chuck Norris just kicks her head off, <laughs> just kicks it off, and you go, whoa, you know. But he was destroying some shows, yeah. and then other shows, just nothing, just nothing. Wow. Just they didn't get it. They didn't want to hear it. He didn't have a uh, gear to go to. No. And he didn't have, uh, um, I mean, I learned from it because I used to think you could make these jokes work for some of these people that don't like them. You could just, I just reach out a little bit. It doesn't mean yeah. changing the jokes. It yeah. just means just give it. It's just something in your it. eyes that says, I, yeah. look, I know you're having a hard time, but I, I don't mean you any harm. I just this is I, this is funny if you listen. I swear to God, just get you know get through. He was. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> oh, I tried to watch that clip so many times to desensitize myself to that joke, but oh my God, <laughs> just thinking of somebody, and he kicks their head off. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. Oh God. <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> <laughs> the way this connects to your life, get it together, okay? The way this connects to your life is um, when he's talking about the whole thing of of the people who were enjoying seeing him struggle. But the only, the only reason that they really were enjoying it, and this is my view because I've been in this situation. I've watched comics do this. Like I've, I've been in the clubs and watched this whole thing go down when I was doing stand-up. The only reason that the people like it so much is because they understand how strong you are, right? And they're just seeing you go through a little bit of a rough patch. Like this this set that he's talking about is not going to make or break his career. So they're more than happy to watch it all happen, right? Cuz it's just a little rough patch. It's 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 nothing. And and they it's not that they know that he's going to get stronger at the end of it, but like you know, as you're going through it, you're going to get stronger once you get through this. Like any bombing, like I've like I've bombed on stage before when I was doing stand up, and Joe Rogan's talked about it. I'm talking about it now. The feeling, just like when you, just like when you try to ask out a chick and like something hilarious, like something ridiculous happens and your friends laugh at you. It's like that feeling, all of a sudden. Or like when you get your ass kicked by somebody, that feeling that you get all of a sudden, it's so intense that the next time around, you're like, this is not happening. Like Joe Rogan had it when he got bullied. You know, he said, I don't want to live like this. And then he learned martial arts. Never happened again. You know, Louis C.K. Like I bombed when I bombed that feeling. I was like, this is never happening again. I'm like, I have to prep more blah 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 even in this youtube thing that i'm doing right now people have called me out on mispronouncing names and 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 reading articles wrong and i'm like well that's never happening again probably gonna happen again but the feeling that you get when you're reading it and you're like oh my gosh i i can't oh i messed up so bad you never want it to happen again it's i i just i love the way he's talking about it because as you bomb and as you go through this hard, hard set or this hard, hard patch of life, you are going to come out stronger if, if you remember what it felt like when you were going through that hardship, right? People who are rich, who people who get rich, who are poor and then get rich, if they remember what it was like when they didn't have any food in the fridge, They'll make sure that they keep making money, right? If if you if you, whatever you go through, if you can just remember back, it goes back to David Goggins. I think I even talked about this on my last video. It goes back to David Goggins talking about the cookie jar. If you can just think back to that point where you were going through that hardship, and now this is your second chance. Remember that thing because it's going to push you. It's going to make you a little sharper. It's going to make you prep a little more. It's going to make you make you work out a little harder if we're talking about sports. like No matter what it is, if you can just remember what it felt like to go through that shitty, shitty thing, the next time around when you have another chance, you're going to be that much better. you know. And I love that he brought it up in, in the sense of stand-up comedy because, again... 
And and even again, people are going to love to watch you go through it. Like if some of you guys have children, like I'm sure you've watched your child do something and fall and then start to cry. And like, you know, in your head, you're like, well, this is like nothing. Like, obviously, it's hard for him right now, but this is nothing. You know, I'm going to pick him up, dust him off. You watch him try again and you get happy watching him fail a little bit because you know that he's going to break through. You know that he's going to do better. Now, if I can get a little meta, if you can be the person, if you could be Louis C.K. going through that hard set and be the guys who are watching him laughing about it all, like really enjoying that he's having this struggle, if you could be both of those people at the same time, you are assured success. You will be assured success in anything that you're trying to push through. Assured, 100%, you will be successful because now you're going to be the person who can trudge through and you can be this other side of yourself that's laughing at you while you do it because you know, you know this is not a make or break thing and you know that you're going to come out stronger at the, on the other end and you know that the more you do this, the more the, the, the stronger, not only the stronger you're going to get, but you are going to achieve whatever it is that you're going after. So try and be those, try and be both of those entities in this whole thing. Try to be the guy going through the rough set and try to be that little crowd of people that are laughing as you're struggling through it. Because if you can laugh at yourself a little bit and understand that this is just part of the process and go through the process, trudge through it and get better and better and better. Bro, you're going to be Goggins. I'm, I'm going to be I'm going to be turning on this thing. I'm going to be saying it's episode 2246 featuring you. And Joe Rogan's going to be talking to you. And he's going to be like, you're just like David Goggins, man. I mean, I'm living here. That was a very bad Joe Rogan impression. But you know what I mean? You will get to the upper echelons of whatever it is that you're trying to do. You will achieve greatness. You have it in you. Don't forget that. All right, I'm out. Bro, that joke was crazy.